directed and produced by J.D. Feigelson, we are talking Dark Knight of the Scarecrow 2 from 2022, also known as Straw Eyes. Of course, a sequel to the original 1981 movie, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, which, which was, was actually co-written by J.D. Feigelson, but he didn't direct that one. So it's a 40 year gap between sequels here. The original movie was a made for TV film that a lot of people consider the best Scarecrow horror related movie. I personally prefer the 1988 movie simply called Scarecrows. In actual fact, that movie is one of my favorite horror films of all time. But nonetheless, the Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, although being a TV movie, was arguably pretty darn good. Now, this sequel uh, hasn't had the best critical reception, and I have, didn't watch it initially because it was so poorly reviewed. But finally, I have got round to seeing it. So let me give you a, a plot synopsis here. Now, it focuses on the same kind of small town um, that, that, that took place in the original movie, but obviously this one is taking place in modern America. And it focuses on this single mother who has uh, witnessed a crime and, and is part of the kind of the witness protection program. Her and her young son have now kind of moved into this kind of uh, rural American small town with a kind of a new name, a new identity to try and get away from uh, this kind of gangster where, where she's had to kind of testify at a trial. So she's kind of there and it's a very small town. Everyone knows each other and it's this kind of like uh, this big secret that there was kind of these deaths all these years ago that um, people kind of don't want to talk about now. But strange things start to happen again and there seems to be a new kind of rash of deaths that are happening um, that we know are related to a killer scarecrow. Now as the film progresses, uh, suspicion starts to mount on this single mother who is, um, you know, has not long lived here and these kind of killings have only started since she's been there. And she's kind of worried about her young son who seems to be taking uh, a very kind of um, keen interest in this kind of woman who kind of looks after him and is this woman kind of using the young son to her own unscrupulous means and what has the scarecrow got to do with it? Well, you'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss what I think works in this movie's favour. I will say I like this movie more than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting much because of the quite frankly poor reviews I'd seen for it so far. But this feels like a TV movie, I will say. Um, uh, but nonetheless, I did think it had some elements that, that did work. Now, this is going to be very mildly spoilery. Very mildly. It's not going to kind of tell you too much. But I, I have to kind of say one thing um, that involves a little bit of a plot detail. One of the things I really enjoyed about this movie is the, the, the son's relationship to this kind of woman that looks after him. And he calls her like aunt. She's not an aunt. She's just kind of like this 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 old elderly lady, who has a who has a connection to the original movie. Um, and this this kind of young boy is almost kind of like obsessed with her. And I think the movie played it pretty well, where you weren't sure as a viewer whether she was kind of a force for good or a force for a negative, an antagonist almost. Because she definitely seems to have a sway on him, and you're not quite sure what she's doing. Uh, but she does seem to, you know, she seems to care for him. She seems to show concern for the mother. Uh, but there's obviously something going on, and I thought that was a great kind of character because you you aren't really sure about her. You know, it, it kind of plays it very ambiguous as to her role and what she's kind of doing and stuff. So I thought that was very good because right up until the end we really don't know what her kind of her end game is what she wants um so i thought that that sort of side of things was good i think the actual concept of this kind of killer scarecrow it does kind of relate back to the original movie it's kind of the same um same character but in a different form perhaps and uh the actual concept of this scarecrow is i think is pretty scary now 
we'll talk about some of the kind of the cinematography where I feel like this movie lets itself down, but the concept is 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 quite uh, sort of spooky. You know, we, we for example we have a, a, a scene where this guy's driving along this road and he could have passed this scarecrow, drives a little further down and he passes the same scarecrow, you know, hung up, same one again. So it's almost like this scarecrow has, it's not just a slasher, it has these kind of supernatural powers. We see it control like a rope and things like that. So it seems to kind of be somewhat kind of powerful but able to kind of manipulate the kind of the reality around it. Uh, so it has these sort of undefined supernatural powers, which gives it a, a kind of creepy vibe. And I think the Scarecrow is less around, less about kind of like hacking people up and more just this kind of the stalking presence, which I thought was, was pretty good. Uh, so I quite like that. I didn't mind the acting in this movie. I thought the characters were quite interesting. Again, the our, our, our central protagonist, the single mother, you know, it's it's made out that she's um, somehow been involved in some type of crime. Uh, it doesn't really give you a lot of information about that, but it leads you to believe that she uh, may have been involved, but has kind of got a deal for herself, uh, and that's why she's in the kind of the um, witness protection. So it hints that she's not a completely altruistic person, which, which again, I think gives um, some depth to the characters. We get like a, a kind of the local kind of cops, these sheriffs, and there's like a good one, and there's kind of like a one who's um, a little bit corrupt and sleazy and kind of like a little bit of a perv almost. But you know, in in a lot of these type of films, I think the kind of like the bad cop is sometimes played to be the dumb one, but here he's actually the one that which I think actually cottons on quicker to what's kind of going on more so than the kind of the more altruistic kind of. Uh, Cop, which again, so I quite liked some of the uh, the character work here. Now, obviously, this was down to the fact that obviously this is uh, directed by the guy who wrote it, who wrote the original movie. So, the I think the writing is certainly the strongest element to this movie. It is a slower paced movie. It kind of has a similar pace to a like an early eighties, late seventies kind of style TV movie, where it is a you know. It's, it's a lot of kind of like um, unseen things happening and then you have the kind of the confrontation at the end of the movie. That's kind of how uh, they, they used to make TV films back then and it follows that that kind of same trajectory. Now, I, it's not going to be a pace that's forever, but I kind of quite like the more mystery, the kind of the spooky kind of build up. So that, that to me, I actually kind of quite enjoyed it. So certainly for the positives, I, I enjoyed this movie, I think, more than some. I thought the look of the Scarecrow was cool as well. He's arguably a little bit... Um, they've decided to uh, enhance it with some CGI, which I think was a mistake, but generally speaking, I kind of like the look of the, the, the Scarecrow, but he looks kind of the same as he did in the original movie. So let's talk about what doesn't work. And yes, there's a, cu a couple of attempts here to just plus some scenes with some CGI. I didn't think it was necessary. But that is what they have done. Um, so that's a minor point, to be honest. The, the pacing, I do think, is going to put some people off. Because it is a slow-paced movie. It's not a particularly kind of action-packed movie. It's not a gory film. Uh, I, you don't really get kind of much in the way of kind of kills on screen. So it's somewhat kind of neutered in regards to its kind of levels of violence. Like I said, it kind of does play like a an early 80s TV movie in that way. Now, despite some of the character work here um, that I think works, there are some things here that I just feel like are just not explained. Like, we don't know why this kind of kid is so obsessed with this woman. We don't know exactly what she is doing to kind of like, to this kid to kind of make him have this connection to the kind of the, uh, uh, the scarecrow. I thought it was going to be revealed that she was going to be doing some sort of a cult ritual that needed this kid for some reason. But we don't get, we don't see anything, so we don't really know why it is that she needs this kid um, specifically, and why this kid is so invested in it. It's just not explained, uh, and that's just an example of one thing where I feel like this movie just doesn't kind of give you any information about what's kind of going on. You've just got to accept it. Um, the, the the kind of the uh, the scarecrow as well. Uh, it, it's kind of hinted at that people it attacked were. 
somehow bad guys, but that's not true either. The guy who I mentioned, who was a, who saw the scarecrows as he was driving by, has did, he was completely innocent, and he's not the only one. So there's like the, 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 the conceit here in the original movie was this scarecrow were the was a guy who was bullied, and he kind of got revenge on his tormentors. But this one, although the scarecrow does ultimately kind of end up killing some bad people. He also kills some innocent people. There's a guy who's got blamed for the uh, some of the deaths, and he hasn't done anything wrong, but he gets kind of uh, um, comes cropped as well, unfortunately. So again, there's just a little bit of kind of like uh, sort of ambiguous stuff that happens in this movie. Now, arguably, you could say not everything needs to be tied up in a kind of neat bow, but to me, it just felt like the movie just didn't it just didn't make some sense. Uh, because it kind of set certain things up and it didn't kind of give you any information about it. Now, the direction, uh, I have to say, is somewhat pedestrian. Um, this movie had the ability to be, or the potential, I should say, to be a, a quite a creepy film. Uh, the Scarecrow, I think the design and the way that it kind of acts, on paper, would be pretty scary. But how it's filmed... You know, it just doesn't come across that way. Um, it just never really feels particularly scary. A lot of it is shot during the day. Uh, the scarecrow kind of never really feels like it's a, this kind of stalking manager. You, you never really feel it just kind of appears or it's kind of um, out, out of sight. So the direction to me was somewhat pedestrian in regards to uh, a, a, the, the dramatic effect, so to speak. Um, so. It's it's a, it ends up being I think a missed opportunity, but the basis of the story. I mean, the writing I feel outside of a few kind of like just omissions about why stuff happens in the first place was relatively strong. Certainly, the character work was good, so I don't think it's as bad as maybe some people make out. But the story is lacking, and I think it's lacking in both its presentation and also um, just a little bit of kind of. Uh, um, context about what's happening so for me it's a five out of ten have you seen it what did you think of it please do leave me a comment and i'll look forward to seeing you next time bye for now